Welcome, and thank you for visiting me here in my studio in Covalo, California. Today we're going to take a look at Kyokechi, a very ancient form of complex clamp resist dyeing. The image I've prepared for you I call Dance of Life and is carved in mirror image on two identical boards. In this case, the wood is hand-hewn, old-growth California redwood dating back to the 1880s. To create an image, deep channels are cut into the wood, acting as moats into which the dye will flow. The high areas will act as dams, restricting the flow of color. Holes are bored through the entire thickness of the board to allow dye to flow into difficult-to-reach restricted areas. Carefully measuring the dimensions of the repeat and fitting the folded cloth the size is crucial to achieve accurate images. I've chosen to use a very open weave Japanese Raimi that's often used in mosquito netting. The open nature of the weave will allow the dyes to flow easily through several layers of fabric. So with that in mind, and since I'd like a repeating pattern, I've decided to fold my fabric into several layers. Next, I need to gently lay the top board in position, sandwiching the fabric, and I'll need to take care to match the carved areas precisely, so that means adjusting the edges, and tweaking things just a bit until I'm satisfied. As you've already seen, the carved raised areas are mirror images, so that when they're put together, um, the raised areas can actually touch each other or pinch. With the cloth in between, it's the cloth that'll be pinched to keep the dye from flowing into that area. So we need to apply quite a great deal of pressure, and towards this end, C-clamps do a great job. Once one corner is secured, not real tight, but enough to hold the boards together, I need to go back and make sure that everything is lined up fine, that the cloth is pulled out all the way to the edges, and once I'm satisfied, I'll start to add the rest of the C-clamps. It's really important that we achieve even pressure throughout the entire clamping process here, you know, to get all the boards clamped evenly. So you cinch them down a bit here and there, add a few more, cinch a little bit more, and once they're all in place, that's when you go back and tighten everything up to give you that last good quality pinch. I'm going to be needing quite a bit of dye, and onion skins are a good, cheap source of it. Neighbors often save their onion skins for me. So I've just left them in the regular onion bag that they came in, and I'm going to push the whole thing down into my boiling water. Stir it, make sure everything gets good and moistened, and then leave it to steep for quite a bit. A um, couple of hours, maybe. Leaving the onion skins in the bag makes it a lot easier to pull them out later. This is also a good time to throw in a mordant if you'd like. I like to use baked alum with onion skins. It turns out that my pot isn't quite deep enough to accommodate my mold, so I'm going to place it in carefully, leave it to steep for a few hours, and then pull it out and gently, it's kind of heavy at this point and hot, but take it and flip it over and let it steep for a few more hours. Having just pulled it from the vat, I want to do some more work on it while it's still piping hot. I've prepared a cochineal concentrate ahead of time. I already have the alum warden still in the fabric, so I'm not going to be adding any more. And using a glass pipette, I'm squirting equal volumes of cochineal into each of the holes following a diagram I've prepared ahead of time. Let me take a moment and show you what the underside looks like. It has the same holes you see on the top side. In this case though, I've plugged them with wine corks to keep the dye from going through. In a moment, I'll plug the top side with corks as well, and then that'll protect the red as it's plunged into the indigo vat in the next step. I'm using an overhead block and tackle to help me lower the board slowly into the vat, giving the air trapped within time to escape. And even though the C-clamps themselves are quite heavy, you can see that the board isn't exactly sinking to the bottom. 
Again, quite a bit of air is trapped in the board itself, so this is going to take some time, this first go around, um, but it'll get easier as we do the second, third, and fourth dunk. It looks like I'm going to have to actually push it under the surface for now. After letting it soak for around 40 minutes to an hour or so, I think it's time to pull it out. I'll pull it slowly, and again, the block and tackle makes this a, quite a bit easier. When working with large pieces like this, I prefer to have the indigo drip outside my pot. I do have a pan to catch the excess dye uh, so I can introduce it into the pot later. Um, but for right now, I'm going to repeat this cycle of dunking the form into the indigo pot, letting it soak for somewhere close to an hour, pulling it out, drip outside the vat, dip it again, pull it out, and do this over and over again, somewhere between, um, you know, six and 12 times. It just depends on how dark I'd like it to get. And actually, the color of my hands as I move along gives me a good indication of what color the fabric will be within the clamps. Now that I've finished with my very last dunk, I'm going to allow the block to hang in this manner overnight to make sure that as much dye drips out and in the process allows as much air to flow in as possible. Now comes the fun part. We get to take off the clamps and see what we've got inside. And here you have it. You can see the yellow penetrated well into the cloth, the indigo helped to define the pattern, and the cochineal red helped to perk up the center just a bit. To put things in perspective, keep in mind that the yellow whitish area, the pinched part of the cloth, the darker area, outline area, is where the channels were cut allowing the indigo to flow in, and the red of course is where we added the cochineal before dipping into the indigo. Pulling back the layers gives you a good indication of the clarity of the pattern and also the typical mirror image of each layer. And here you see the fabric relative to the board itself. Well, thank you for taking time to visit me here in Kovalo. I know I've enjoyed this and I certainly hope you have as well. So before I send you on your way, I'd like to show you a few more shots of the stencil so that you can see the pattern as a whole. And then also I'd like to show you a few more examples of pieces dyed, some with just indigo, some with other colors added. I hope this inspires you to go on and create beautiful things of your own. I hope you'll be able to join me for another studio visit soon. And until that time, may all your colors die true.